G'day, I'm Ray Tomes from New Zealand. I'm going to talk today to you about resonance uh, and what this has to do with cycles. Uh, Christian Huygens was the man who, who first noticed something that later became known, directly recognised as resonance. He had some clocks on his wall and he was not well, he was watching them. And the two, they were pendulum clocks and two of the clocks were swinging uh, like this, exactly opposite to each other, repeatedly. And they never got out of phase. He thought, well, they must be um, running at nearly the same rate, so I'll watch them, and after a while, they'll start doing, you know, a little bit different to each other. But it never happened. Uh, they kept staying together, so he tried um, messing it up. But after a while, it always came back together again. So he understood that something was going on, but he didn't understand what it was. And later on, this has been come to be known as resonance, that, uh, that something will follow even a tiny little signal. The signal was that these two were actually mounted on a beam. So one of them swinging was doing a tiny little force on the beam to the other, and the other was doing a little tiny force back. And the result of this was that they were, even if they weren't, wouldn't naturally run at exactly the same rate, the fact that they were transmitting the force, which was the average rate between them, uh, this force was causing them to come into synchronization. We also know this the story, we hear the story of the opera singer in the wine glass, that if exactly the right note is hit, the wine glass will shatter. The reason for this is that with resonance, if something is going at exactly the right frequency, to some natural system, such as the wine glass or the other clock, then the, um, the system that's feeding energy to it will accumulate and accumulate, making the thing vibrate more and more and more. Um, and so even the tiniest little force can actually have a significant effect. The same thing is used um, today. We would never, without that understanding of resonance, we would not have modern inventions like television and radio because radio depends that, that some vibration that is being made uh, in, a, in a studio or, or sometime historically and has been recorded is used to modulate a carrier wave and the radio is picking it up, is tuned to exactly the right frequency. So those vibrations that um, are ever so tiny that are being sent out into the world and distributed over a large area and are being mixed up with many other vibrations of different frequencies by tuning the radio to exactly the right frequency it picks out that one signal and it vibrates with it and it builds up the energy of that and the signal comes through clearly um, to another place. Now that, that type of thing um, the, the tuning accuracy is important and I want to suggest that when it comes to cycles and things that we don't understand uh, why they're there and why multiple different things have the same cycles in them as Edward Dewey of the foundation for the study of cycles found. This, this is a realistic uh, explanation even though we don't know exactly the me what forces are passing it. So if for example um, it was found that the 9.6 year cycle that exists in the Canadian lynx has been found in about 10 or 20 other species to have the same cycle, and also in other weather-related things and conditions um, all over the world that exist, the same cycle pops up. It would seem that something, some tiny force that's regularly doing this, um, or um, it may not be doing it at that frequency, it may do it at some other frequency, but which is modulated by this frequency, will be causing this thing to appear in multiple different things in multiple different places. And that's a characteristic because many scientists have refused to admit the existence of these groups of cycles with particular periods. And I think that scientists today are not true scientists because they, they don't look at the facts. They look at the theories that they've been taught and they say, how does this fit with what I've been taught? And if it doesn't fit, or they can't see how it fits, which is really the truth, then they reject things, and they reject all sorts of things which are actually true through this, this sort of thinking. Of course, it's a reason to maybe have a little bit of scepticism, but when, uh, when something is found to be true, um, saying it doesn't exist because you can't explain it with your theories is not, a, not very scientific. It, that sort of thinking should be given up. So I think this sort of 
thinking is a way that we can understand how cycles that have been found in many things can be explained. Uh, and we need to look then at what are the actual, these tiny forces, and where do they come from. And it's quite clear that they come from outside the Earth, that there are, because we can find these same cycles, sometimes in the motion of the planets, as well as on things on Earth. And this has mistakenly led people to believe that it's all astrology, um, because they think the motion of the planets being tied up with something on Earth means that the planets are doing it. But in actual fact, the planets, just like the things on Earth, are dancing to the universal vibrations. And it's the cosmos, the vibrations of the cosmos, which is the real cause uh, that's leading both the planets' motions and the things on Earth to happen. We know this because some of these cycle periods are found very far from the Earth and other places. Uh, for example, there's a 160-minute cycle and also an associated 80-minute cycle. And these ones can be used to explain the distance of the outer planet from the Sun. They're found in many biological systems and other, elsewhere. They're found in the rotation rates of the planets and the rotation rates of asteroids and of binary stars. There are peaks of periods that are, that are multiples or fractions of 160 minutes. They're also found in the cores of galaxies. So quite clearly this is a universal phenomenon, not just something that's happening in our solar system that caused the whole structure of the solar system to be formed, to fit in with that thing. And so these tiny cycles, which aren't known to most physicists or cosmologists, are actually causing a huge amount of the structure and behaviour of everything around us to go on.